Hi, welcome back to Bucks on Explorer. Hope you guys are doing great. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, one of the tragic stories of the Polish Himalayanism, uh, the story of Maciek Barbeka, uh, who died on Broad Peak in winters in 2013. It was a major setback for, for the Polish uh, climbing fraternity. But Barbeka's story is really sad because of the fact that he uh, was the first one to climb Broad Peak all the way up to uh, 8,000 meters, or the first person, first climber ever to reach 8,000 meter height in the Pakistani 8,000s. Before that, there was uh, absolutely no way anyone could have penetrated the, the Karakorams uh, in winters. But Babette's obsession uh, with Broad Peak uh, led to the uh, inevitable outcome of his death because the first time Rebecca tried to climb uh, Broad Peak was back in 87, 88 when he was part of the first winter um, expedition which was trying uh, trying to climb K2 in under the, the leadership of Savarda who was the pioneer of the winter Himalayanism. And because of also he was part of the, ma the magical fraternity known as the Ice Warriors back then, he was coming down uh, up for climbing Manaslu and Joyo in uh, in the winters for the first time. So he had an amazing portfolio in terms of winter climbing. And so naturally he was part of the, the K2 expedition back in 87, 88. Poles were trying to, to ascend K2 for the first time in winters. They were coming down from... Uh, most part of the, the most of the 8,000 meters in Nepal, they have already climbed in winters, including Everest in the 1980s. And so naturally, they were thinking that K2 would be uh, their obvious next target, but K2 proved to be very tough for them. And as they were descending from K2, uh, Barbeka and Alexander Lowe, the two uh, expedition members, uh, got this permission from Zabarda to try to attempt Broad Peak. They did not even change their town suits and they laid siege uh, to the Broad Peak, 8,047 meters. And their, their siege was very, uh, very interesting and uh, unprecedented because of the fact that they did not fix any ropes, they did not have any oxygen cylinders, they, uh, they laid siege of the mountain in alpine style in winters. And when they reached uh, Camp Four, Alexander Lowe was uh, was uh, really not sure of how this is going to be possible, and he was not physically in the right shape to do it. So he decided to go back. But back up back then, uh, had absolutely no plans of turning back, and he decided to proceed. Although the base camp, uh, the the team at the base camp tried to convince him to return, but he did not. After some time, the fog engulfed the mountain. There was visibility was really low. Perpeka continued with his climb, and when he uh, reached the, the 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 pass from where you take a turn towards the right to the actual summit of the Broad Peak, he missed that actual uh, he missed that turn, and he started kept climbing all the way to the fourth summit of Broad Peak, and he reached the top, and he informed the base camp that he has reached the top. Not now this is where the, the twist actually happened. The team at the base camp, uh, with all the coordinates and the, the description given by Barbeka, realized that Barbeka is not at the top. This is not the top broad peak. But Zavada decided that if we inform Barbeka right now that he's not on top of the actual broad peak summit, he is going to turn around and start trying to climb the actual summit of broad peak, which is going to be fatal for him for by all means. Uh, they already had the weather uh, predictions and everything was going wrong at this at that particular time. So the, the expedition at the base camp lied to Rebecca that he has actually reached the, the summit of Broad Peak and he, they congratulated him and um, asked him to turn back as soon as possible. But back up, realizing that he has uh, uh, captured the, the Broad Peak for the first time in winters, was really happy he started descending uh, but weather was going bad and he had to uh, to take shelter in a snow cave for I think a day or two before he was eventually uh, came 
down to the base camp and the expedition members were not able to look him straight in the eye and they congratulated him for the success and everything. And after three months, Berbeka came to realize that he was lied to about his success on the broad beat only because the expedition members felt and feared that he's going to turn around trying to attempt broad beat again and could possibly use his life. This was more of a psychological breakdown for Berbeka. Uh, his reputation was tarnished forever. He could not be uh, the hero he always was for the Polish um, nation. This reality struck Berbeka uh, like a bullet in the head. He lost it psychologically. His, his uh, reputation in his eyes was tarnished forever. And this was a stain that is going to haunt him for the rest of his life. He went in oblivion and uh, for a certain period of time, he st stopped climbing even, and uh, there was no media coverage of uh, what Barbeka was doing and what he was indulging himself into. He was just uh, uh, gradually slipped into oblivion. Until the time he actually found the love of his life, Eva Deakovisko Barbeka, they got married, and uh, Barbeka sort of found uh, a certain semblance uh, to the life he was uh, leading at that time. Uh, after that, Berbeka obviously stayed away from the main action from the Milan, uh, Polish Milanism, although he did climb Everest and a uh, couple of other high mountains uh, in, in, in this period of time, but he was obviously not in the forefront of the major Polish climbing action. Until in 2013, this opportunity came to him. A uh, Polish climbing team decided to, to attack Broad Peak and try to climb it for the first time in winters. And Barbeka naturally was presented with this opportunity to be part of the, the expedition. And naturally, this was an opportunity for Barbeka to set the coast straight, to, to regain his reputation, to be again the ice warrior he always was. And obviously, he was obsessed with Broad Bay back then. And when he decided to be part of the expedition, uh, Eva and Berbeka had a long conversation, and Eva did ask him to promise that if there is a moment when he has to uh, to make a decision to go beyond his life or to turn back, he will have to decide to turn back, and he will not put his life uh, in fatal danger trying to climb Broad Bay. And Berbeka, although did promise to Eva that he would uh, he would turn back, but both of them at that moment knew that if a moment comes where Berbeka has to decide, he will not be coming back. On March fifth, two thousand thirteen, four Polish climbers were in a, were in, a in in the reach of the Broad Peak summit, and they were. The four East climbers of the Polish uh, Victory Milanism, uh, including Aaron Bilisky, Artur Malik, uh, Maciej Barbeka, and Tomasz Kowalski. Uh, the base camp had already informed them that, that the weather window is really short and they have to turn back if they do not find it feasible to climb to the top. And they were at the cave, at Camp 4. Uh, four of these climbers were at the Camp 4, decided to uh, unrobed themselves and tried to reach the summit all by themselves, each independently. And Adabaliski and uh, Art Malik were the first one to reach the top. And when they were coming down, Berbeka and Kowalski was trying to reach the top. This was the moment that uh, a lot of uh, um, critics say that Beliski being uh, one of the ace climbers in the team should have con tried to convince Berbeka and Kowalski to return as they already had the summit. But Adabilski have time and again uh, argued the fact that he was absolutely no one to tell somebody to turn back and not to attempt the summit, you know. Although he does say that he regrets the fact that he should have tried to convince Berbeka and Kowals to return, but he did not. Basically because he did not think that it was right to convince somebody to not go for the summit. And uh, the team made it to the top at 5 p.m. local time. And... Uh, Adam Wilski was coming down, the back and Kowalski were going up. They stayed at Camp 4, tried waiting for the climbers to descend. 
uh, Blisky said that he saw the two climbers very close to the summit, going to the top. Um, but the, the weather window was really small, and uh, the Christoph Blisky, the team leader, uh, ordered the uh, the two climbers in the cap for to descend uh, immediately. So Adam Blisky and Arthur Malik had to descend, leaving Barbeka and Kowalski at the top. Um, after one day, there was uh, no sign uh, of Kowalski or Berbeka. The team uh, decided to launch a rescue operation, including Arthur Malik and uh, Karim Hayat of Pakistan. They reached about 7,700 meters, but uh, they had absolutely no sign of the two climbers. The weather was going bad, and they had to descend. Eventually, on March 10th, 2013, the expedition announced um, the death of Machit Barbeka and Tomas Kowalski. Four months later, uh, they found the body of Tomas Kowalski near the pass at about 7,900 meters, somewhere around 150 meters uh, short of the summit. But Barbeka's body was never found. At the time of the expedition, Machit Barbeka was about 59 years old. Machik Barbeka's story is tragic and sad in the sense that the obsession actually claimed his life, the life of one of the great winter climbers of all times. And right now as we speak, Barbeka uh, sleeps in the lap of Broad Peak, uh, an obsession, a psychological nightmare uh, that haunted him for 25 years of his life. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more.